tonight knows what it feels like to get knock, knocked down. It happens to all of us. To take one right on the jaw. But what do you do when that happens? Do you curl up in a ball? Yeah. We don't curl up in balls here. Tonight, I want all you to see just how much fighter you've got inside. I want you to see that you can come back from anything. And you can do it with a big idea. Like my next guest was once told she'd be on welfare her whole life. Pamela McCauley Bell, CEO of Tech Solutions. Welcome, Pamela. Thank you. Uh, should I say Dr. McCauley Bell? <laughs> you can call me Pamela. Okay. That's Dr. Bell, but it's a long way back before being a doctor. When you were a kid growing up, what was it like when you were eight, nine, ten years old? Oh, it was great. My dad was an Army drill sergeant, and we had fun. My mom stayed at home. Uh, I was into cheerleading and gymnastics, so it was fun. Good black Baptist family. All nice, going wet, great. Mm -hmm. What happens at 15? Well, I, uh, my cheerleading skirt was tight, and I was pregnant. And so I had a daughter when I was 15 years old. What did your parents say about that? Well, they were obviously devastated. Um, I was devastated. It was a lot different having a child in the 70s, uh, single, than it was today. And it was, I felt like my whole world ended. And I don't think there's any time that it's easy for a 15-year-old to have a child. Anymore. I agree with 50, that. 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 100 years agree. from now. Right. So you have a, a daughter. Mm -hmm. You're 15. You're, I guess, 10th grade? 10th grade. It was the end of my sophomore year, May 3rd. What happens? Well, um, it, was, it was devastating, but uh, thank God for my faith in God, and my parents were very supportive, even though they were very, very disappointed. But society made me feel like I was going to be nothing, uh, and like I was never going to accomplish anything. And even some people who were close to me told me I was going to be on welfare forever, and by the time I was 20, I'd have four or five kids. And I'd always been a good student, and I remember sitting on the steps, and my dad told me, you can still go to school. And he said, I, you're still a smart girl, and you can still get your education. And thank God. Dad. But as a drill sergeant, obviously not making a ton of money, so you had to go on welfare for your daughter. Exactly, and it was very um, humiliating. And I remember my mom went with me to the welfare office, and that was one of the lowest points of my life because my parents had a lot of pride. I mean, we didn't have a lot of money, but we, they were hardworking, sure. we had a lot of pride. And so I'm sitting here waiting to get welfare to take care of my, my baby, and it just wasn't what I expected my life to be like. And I remember going in the bathroom and crying and saying, this is not what I want. But my mom, she said, honey, this is just for a little while. She said, you can get through this. And I, we're from Oklahoma. I say she's the most optimistic person in the world. If a tornado's coming, she says, at least we'll get a good breeze. So, you know, that, that's her approach. And she said, you can get through this. What, take me inside that welfare office. You, 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 I, I, you're 15 years. I'm thinking about my friend's kids who are 15, who are babies. You're a baby. I was. And I, walking into this government agency, as you right. said, you're human. What, what was going on with the person there? What's the process? What? Because that's well, about as low as it can get. Also, it, it is. Well, and they know they're not going to make it easy for you to get some assistance. So we had planned to be there the whole day. And I remember walking in and seeing all these. Women, they had their kids running around, and, and, and I wanted to look nice, so I dressed up, and I, Annette was about two months old then, so I dressed my baby up, I wanted to look nice. I said, I don't want them to think I'm just here for a handout. We just need help for a little while. Well, they didn't care about that. I mean, you, you were just a, a, a statistic yeah. to them. But it was, it was very uh, disturbing, and I said, I don't ever want to have to feel this way again. And so that's part of the reason I really worked so hard to make a good life for Annette, and me. <laughs> Did somebody in the welfare office tell you, honey, you're going to be here forever, or you're never getting off welfare? What, what was the inspirational speech one of these geniuses on welfare gave you? Well, um, one lady told me <laughs> it was close to my completing my bachelor's degree in engineering. And because I worked two or three jobs and um, had to take care of Annette, it took me longer to complete my bachelor's degree than most people. So at the same, I was getting financial aid and, and working part time and getting student loans. And I remember my last year, I was 18 away, hours away from finishing my bachelor's degree. And I went in the welfare office and I said, I need to sign up because I would work in the summers and not be on welfare in the summer, but during the academic year, get the assistance and the food stamps. And she said, well, now, Pamela, uh, I just don't know if we can give you any more help. She said, and I said, well, but I'm so close to graduating. And she said, um, what makes you think that we should give you this money to go to college and get an engineering degree when people are digging ditches to get give you this money, these tax dollars? And the LaFrance Macaulay rose up in me, my mom, because, I mean, I was still, I was only 22 years old when she's telling me this and telling me, I'm, and without this help, I didn't know how I was going to graduate. And I said, well, I remember a name very clearly, which I will not use. I said, they... <laughs> use a first name so if she's watching. Well, well, give a first okay. name. Laura. 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 Okay. All right, Laura. Yeah. So what did you say, Laura? I said... 
<laughs> they have chosen to dig ditches, and I choose to get my engineering degree. Right. So, <laughs> you, you attended a community college because you couldn't afford, obviously, a university. That's right. That's and right. had you take me through out of the community college? Okay. Well, the community college, and that was a great thing for me. I always say have a plan. I mean, we all want to do things, but without a plan, it just doesn't get done. And again, some of that gets back to my dad, the drill sergeant. I had to have a plan for everything, which didn't make sense in seventh grade. <laughs> but uh, as, as my life has gone on, it's been very helpful. So daddy said, have a plan. So I planned to go to the University of Oklahoma. Well, I couldn't afford to go to OU. So I had to go to the community college, and that worked out for me. That was a lot cheaper. So I went there, um, had some good luck with my academics there. But again, it took uh, longer than most people. So you at a community college, then you got a community college. No, I got. I was at the community college for three years, just doing financial aid and work study, and then I went to the university. Well, and even when I went to the university, some of my cousins said, "Well, you have an associate's degree. You know, basically that's good enough for a little colored girl. Why are you going to the university?" So, but I said, "Well, I want to get an engineering degree," and I was still had these hopes that someday I might even be able to be a doctor. But I wouldn't even, even tell people because people would laugh at me. But I still kept that dream it's inside. It's amazing how people want to keep it down. It's it's, it's all. You know, you've named people, whether it's a person in welfare, whether it's this person, everybody's always, for some reason, I don't think people, people are jealous sometimes of other people succeeding. And, I, and, and I think you, they you are. You can't listen to them, man. I mean. And we start to believe that. And that's why I say it's so important for us to have positive inputs. I listen to positive music. I read positive books. There's enough negativity that's going to come at you anyway. So I'm going to give myself some positive things. So you got, I love you, man. So you got the scholarship. <laughs> you get a scholarship. Yes. You get your engineering de degree. Right. And how did you start the business? Well, I was um, on the faculty at MIT in the aeronautics. I just want to stop something for a second. <laughs> Fifteen-year-old mother in a welfare office. Well, I was on the faculty of MIT. I, I mean, there isn't anything you can't do. I mean, come on. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. you are special, man. You are. Thank you. Now, well, I've been. I've been really blessed. I mean, I've been so blessed, and I've always had so many good people around me, which I, I think that's also so important. But I was on the faculty at MIT, and I was thinking, God, I'm working so hard here. I sure would like to make a little more money than what I'm making now. And one of my friends is a professor at the University of Central Florida, where I now maintain my tenure. She said, Pamela, why don't we start a business? She said, we're smart women. We can make some money. And, I, and money is good. Money's never been my primary motivator, but I mean, I like money. It's it's good. Uh, but uh, it's, right. yeah. it's but not it, the primary it, motivator. Right. It's good to exactly. have. Exactly. Right. And so I said, well, sure, let, let's do it. So we started the business in 99. And um, I really did want, it's a department, we primarily do Department of Defense uh, contracting, uh, keeping our soldiers safe and helping them with technology. Amen. So Amen. I'm very excited about that. And of course, my dad. The drill sergeant is thrilled that his daughter is helping the army. So I love it. he thinks I do a lot more than I do. And but. you have an interesting COO of the company. Who's yes, the COO? I do. The COO of my company is my beautiful 28 year old daughter, Annette. Thank you. This could be my favorite guest of all time on The Big Idea. Kyle Nicole Dell, CEO of Tech Solutions. You can come back from anything. Dig in, dig down. Find the strength. More Big Ideas straight ahead. Thanks, What a pleasure. It's an absolute pleasure.